Well, good morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of our God. And by the way, so we forgot to reset the sanctuary clock back there. So uh, it says 12 o'clock, so we're dismissed. All right, see you guys later. <laughs> so I'm thankful that all of you remember to, to set your clocks back the hour. Uh, we're, uh, we want to welcome those who are watching online. And we want to welcome back, of course, a lot of returning faces this morning. Um, and y'all are all scattered. I think they all called each other and said, are you coming back? Yes, I'm coming back too this week because you're coming back. All right, so we're glad to see some returning uh, faces uh, in worship with us this morning. The Springfields, the Selmans, uh, Mr. Wilbur, uh, and it, I, I'm trying to look around to make sure. But thank you for being here today. Um, we are Today is also known as All Saints Sunday. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, um, it is a Sunday where we, uh, we would read off the names of those who have passed away. And so I, I do have a list that, uh, from Facebook um, and from uh, those who have texted me to, to let me know about it this morning of, of names that they would like read off. But I'm still going to allow for a time during our prayer uh, for us to uh, mention names of those who have passed away. And by the way, it's not limited to uh, just those who have uh, passed away in this last year or last two years. Um, it is. It honestly is for those people that have impacted your life that you're thinking about and remembering uh, this morning. And so we want to honor those because uh, the Bible says, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. You know, uh, when the, the Hebrew writer wrote that, it didn't say limited cloud of witnesses. It said by a great cloud of all the witnesses that have gone on before us. So this morning, uh, be praying through that. We'll do that at a, a different point in our service. Um, I'll do it right after actually the uh, Old Testament reading and before the hymn of praise. So uh, it didn't make it into our bulletin this morning, but I wanted to make you aware. And the next Sunday, we'll be honoring, of course, our veterans. Uh, this week is veteran. This coming week is Veterans Day, so we'll be honoring all of those who have served um, in, in our for our country next next Sunday. And so we wanted to make you aware of those things uh, as well. So uh, with that, do we have any other announcements? I have one that's really going to be a lot of fun. So if you weren't paying attention, we had a pastor's uh, cook-off for the South Wesley Foundation last week. Did anybody hear anything about that last week at all? Just a little bit? Uh, not from Diane? Okay, anyway, so uh, that was our first time, as far as I know, uh, no one has told me otherwise, so I'm going to stick with this. This was our first appearance in the 16 years of the history of the South Wesley Foundation cook-off, and it's called the Pastor's Cook-Off, but um, you don't want me to cook for you. So, um, I can mess up a Hot Pocket in the microwave, okay? So, um, but we won in two different categories. There were three different categories that you can win in. So we won two out of three. And so those lovely plates that are sitting over here in the chair um, are our championship trophies. We get to keep those for a full year. Um, yes, you know, and so we beat out, I think 17 other churches uh, for, uh, for best tasting food. So we owe a lot of thanks, not to me, uh, but to Mike McKinley, because Mike McKinley is the one that put together all the food, the brisket uh, and the barbecue sauce. But we also thank, uh, I have a lot of people to thank this morning uh, that helped uh, decorate that table. Because again, um, you can kind of see that we do a little bit of decorating in the church for tables. And if it had been up to me, I would have probably been a lot like one of our other tables where there was just a pot of meat on a table and that's it. So a thank you to all of our volunteers who uh, helped uh, with that. You, uh, that. That ward has more to do with you than it does with me. Uh, same with the food, uh, but we get to hold on to those for a year, and we get to have bragging rights for a full year. So if anybody ever brings it up, you can just say, <clears throat> we have best tasting food and the best decorators in the church. So congratulations to you and to the church. By the way, uh, so I want to throw out, this is the number of, uh, that they raised that night from the auction, the silent auction, and the cook-off. $16,000. Yeah. So uh, the other category that we didn't win, uh, that we were a distant seventh place, um, was the actual total uh, of each bucket that they have in front. So the winning church was like $2,500. 
The next church was like twenty two hundred, and then twenty you know two thousand uh, dollars. We raised a fair amount. We did well, but um, I don't think we're going to have a collection year round for that. Just in order to try to sweep all categories, unless Diane takes that charge up. So, but with that, do we have any other announcements this morning? All right. Well, let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning on this All Saints Sunday, remembering those whose lives have touched our life, to remember the great cloud of witnesses, and that we are to called by them to fix our eyes on Jesus. We miss them, we love them, and we give thanks to you that we even got to participate in their journey. So Lord, help us to remember them this morning to remember the witnesses of the faith, fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters, cousins, uncles and aunts who have witnessed to us in the church. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I would like to make a special request to you guys this morning, our call to worship is through it all. We've had a, a year, we've been all come through it, and look, sitting down in our church, in front of our church down here is Robert, Nancy, and Greg, and uh, everybody else has had, has had the COVID and sicknesses. Would you stand with me and everybody sing with me through it all? For we all come through it, so sing out loud with me, would you? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm like everyone else this morning. It's so good to see faces here that we haven't seen in some time. So welcome back because we have missed you. You're, you're an important part of the family here at uh, Satsuma United Methodist Church. I want to challenge the people that were in Sunday school this morning to ask someone in the congregation before you leave today to join us next week in Sunday school. We're doing a study on prayer that uh, Roy is leading, and uh, it has been very enjoyable and eye-opening, the things that we miss when we're not praying, even when we do pray. So please come next week. I'll, I want to invite every one of you right now, but be expected to be asked by someone else to come and join us next Sunday at 9.45 for coffee and 10 uh, for Sunday school. And also, we got our book study started back last week, and I was so excited. We had 14 in attendance, and some more promises of, of some that's promised to come to book study. It's informal uh, study time. We enjoy it, and we want everyone to come. It's not too late. Uh, each week, we'll take a chapter. We'll be on chapter two 
uh, for this next Wednesday. So please come and join us for a book study too. Does anyone have any uh, special prayer concerns? We got a lot of blessings now because we see the ones that's back in church today. Michelle? My niece, Megan uh, Pike Corley, Wesley, her husband, her husband's name is Corley. I'll get it right. We got, hey, we got a big family, you know, <laughs> to keep up everybody's names. Anyone else this morning? Oh, De oh sorry. Yeah, we'll remember Debbie's mom and Debbie's aunt. My sister's had a wonderful time with your mom on Halloween night. She dressed her up for Halloween, and they had a ball. Yep, they had a ball. <laughs> All righty. My neighbor, um, she's not here this week before, but she used to go this week. She's going to apply to be, be put on the transplant plant list for a new liver. So mm -hmm. we need to pray for her. Uh, the Barlow's uh, neighbor. All right. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, through it all, through it all, you are there with us, Father, and we're so thankful for that. And Lord, we just thank you for this month that we're starting now to reflect more on our blessings. You bless us all in mighty ways. And, Father, may we have entered your doors today with thankful hearts. You tell us in everything, give thanks. And, Father, we thank you for all the people that you have put in our lives, the ones who are gone, that made lasting impressions on all of us, Father. We thank you for that. And, Father, we lift you up in this service today with prayers, singing, music, Bible reading and preaching. And may we all that we do today, Lord, please you. And Father, thank you for loving all of our sick and our hurting and our shut-ins and uh, people that are, are facing uh, serious illnesses and transplants in their lives and people that are, are going through difficult uh, pregnancies and other situations that we have on our hearts this morning, Father. We just thank you for being there. And may they all feel your presence in their life, Father, your presence of peace and comfort. These things I ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. And now I'm going to read from Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. This is God's word for God's people. Before we uh, let the choir continue leading us in worship, um, this morning I mentioned that it was All Saints Sunday and that uh, we would be reading some names uh, this morning. And so uh, if, before we read the names, a um, little bit of instructions. Um, at the very end, um, and I had... You can choose any note on the piano at the very end, and we will play one note. I'll ask everybody to bow their head, and we'll play one note and let that ring out. And as just a reminder of the faithful witness to the lives of the people that we're about to mention. So uh, is there anybody whose name, uh, you didn't get a chance to submit a name, but you would want to make sure this morning that that name is read aloud to the church. So if you have a name that you would like to be read, it's not in our bulletin this morning. Uh, but someone whose who's life has impacted your own, who's already gone unto glory, uh, would you like to mention their name? Greg? Uh, Terry Selman. She's 
She's already on our list. Robert Tender. He is already on my list, but I'll make sure we... Say it again. Emma Combs. Billy Tool. Say it again. Marie Wolverton. Of course, those who are watching online, you can uh, type in a name and leave it in the comment section, and we will add it to a list later on today and post that list for everybody. Um, as we get ready to read these names, um, just remember that this is a time for us to just remember and to be thankful for their, the lives that have impacted our lives and the witness of faith. Um, so let us uh, remember them. Would you bow with me as I read each name this morning on All Saints Sunday? These names will also be read again tonight at Charge Conference. Robert Matthew. Mandy Cooper. Clint Guy. Willa Dean Jordan. Frank and Dory Myers. Alma Driver, Shirley Davis, Harland Chisholm, Rankin Barnes, Jerome Warren, Ray Heathco, Kathy Cavan, Charles Pike, Danny Chambers, Terry Selman, Paul Beatros Sr., Robert Tyndall, Emma Combs, Billy Toole, Joe and Beulah Smith, Marie Wolverton. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you stand with me for our opening hymn this morning, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. As we sing first, second, and the third verses, look to the screen for the verse.
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one tr true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I guess I was a little quick here to get us to give back to the Lord what he's truly blessed us with this week. Uh, it's our time to give our, our tithes and offering, offerings, and there's many ways that you can give. You can give here in person. Uh, you can s drop it off here at the, at the fellowship hall, or you can mail it in to the address that's on, on the screen. If you would, please bow with me now. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you for the day you've given us. Lord, each day is a blessing in itself, and we, we just praise you for that. And now, Lord, as we prepare to give back to you what you have blessed us with in abundance, that portion which belongs to you, Father, we just ask that you use it to, to magnify your name and to further the cause of Christianity in, in this world. Lord, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
Sally's doing. Okay, if you, if okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. All right. Uh, we are uh, starting our giving season for Thanksgiving, and we are not going to be donating it to the Baptist Church. We have some families that are related to um, our church family, and so uh, we're going to be blessing them. So what I want to say to you, I see that Clay's message is going to be talking about being thankful, and uh, my word this month is going to be blessed. We have been so blessed uh, with so many different things in our lives, so our theme for our giving is going to be be a blessing. And uh, the boys and girls may have, where, do you have your jar? Run, get your jar. The boys and girls have um, jars. Do any of you, do you, any of you grown people from Sunday school have a jar? Hold it up. Oh, tell me what it says. Jesus jar. What does your jar say? Jesus jar. Oh, you got a big one. All right, let me, let me see Mia's. All right, Mia has a little jar because she does not have a job. And so she has a little jar, but how big is yours, Logan? Yeah, Logan doesn't have a jar either. But all of you in Sunday school have big jars because you have big pocketbooks and big checking accounts. So I want you to take that home, if you will, and I have some more, of course. And you can put pennies, nickels, dimes, checks, credit cards. I don't know about that. All right, but so I thank you ahead of time, and I do want us to look at this as you know, this is not something you have to do. I hope you do it, you know, because you want to and because you can and because you truly feel blessed. And what I'm trying to do with the younger people also is teach them, let them learn what it is to be a blessing to somebody else because, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. And so I'm going to um, apologize uh, because I have robbed a lot of you of an opportunity to be a blessing. I mean, it, like we were at the meeting, Clay, uh, no, the day Crystal spoke, you know, I'm sitting back, back we're going to do that. We're gonna, you know, we're going to do that. I told her after church, we're going to do that. Clay doesn't know it yet, but we'll be there with a the booth. And then he said, you know, we, we need to, uh, I want us to have a table in the sanctuary for Thanksgiving. I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, <laughs> you know, so. I apologize because I have robbed a lot of you of an opportunity to serve and be a blessing. So Joe told me the other day, he said, you know, Diane, there are other people in the church. <laughs> and uh, so I very humbly apologize. And, you know, I'm going to step out of the way and, and, and try to keep my mouth shut. I, 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 just, I just say it. Okay. So what we want to do this morning, all right, uh, uh, if you guys will come up here. All right, Daniel, you'll be first because you're B. And you're also going to be L. And Neil, you come right next to him. You're going to be E. And Charity, if you'll be. I mean, all right. All right. You hold your E. And hold this up so everybody can see it. And then you, you're going to do hands on knees, okay? Uh huh. You have two. Okay. Hold it up like that. Okay. So, uh, uh, congregation, or hold them up in order. That's La Bull. There, there you go. Labuh. Okay. All right. Hold it up real high so everybody can read it. All right. Spell it to me. What does that spell? Blessed. Blessed. Okay. So we're going to, each of them has something they're going to say, and, uh, and Allie's going to help you. Okay. All right. All right. Believe in God. Love one another. Expect opportunities to bless others. Show others that you have Christ in your heart. Serve God by serving others. 
and courage every chance you get. <laughs> Decide to be a blessing. <laughs> okay, so this is your opportunity. Thank you, guys. And thank you for the teenagers because, you know, I just rooked them in. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Let's talk to God. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the beautiful weather, for all of your blessings. And, Lord, we just ask, uh, we thank you that we have an opportunity to serve others and to be thankful because we are so blessed. And help us this week to look for opportunities to be an example to others and let, uh, that we would not have to say to somebody, I'm a Christian, that they could look at our lives and how we treat other people and know that you live in our hearts. And, Lord, we just ask that you... Uh, bless our blessing that we're trying to be to others, Lord, that we will uh, give abundantly with a loving heart and in the right spirit. And Lord, I, I just, uh, you know my heart, and I do ask that uh, you help me keep my mouth shut sometimes. And, and we have so much talent in here and so many people who have good ideas and are willing to serve. And I just pray that you place that up on their heart and that they step forward and volunteer and, and, and show that they too can be a blessing in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, uh, You can bring it back next Sunday and dump all your money up here and then take the jar back home with you or give it to somebody else. How about that?
Colossians 3.12, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loved, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humanity, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. The words of the Lord for the people of God. Well, God is good. And all the time, I invite you to pray with me this morning. Let us pray. Well, good and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come to your word hungry and thirsty for more of you, for your righteousness in our lives. So Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying for us to obey this morning. May we be thankful. May we be grateful. But most of all, Lord, may we be filled today to overflowing to be that we are blessed to be a blessing to others. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said. Did you know uh, in high school I played sports? uh, I, I played on the basketball team. And um, I was not a great player. I will be the first to admit that. Um, In fact, I often would show up to the basketball practice and look at the six, seven guys that are on our team and just ask myself, what is exactly um, it is I have to offer to this team other than I can, um, I knew how to drive to the lane and get fouled a lot. And so for those who don't know the game of basketball, um, you know, it's technically a no contact sport. But those who have played the game, they know uh, that everything in basketball is contact. We got any basketball players in here? I know, I know, right there, right there. Joe, I, Joe, I was going to say, you're tall enough. You, they, they, you probably just showed up and they're like, you're on the basketball team, okay? Um, but, but I played point guard. And so my, my number one job was to get the ball into to other people. And what, but one particular year, um, I had decided, and I was going into my senior year, uh, for, I could always touch the rim because I, 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 I unfortunately tapped out on height in ninth grade. I reached 5'11 and three quarters of an inch, uh, and I always say that begrudgingly because I almost made six foot. Okay? Almost. So my wife always points out when I say I'm six foot, she's like 5'11 and three quarters. I was like, I know. But we, in the Marines and in the military, um, we round up. Anyway, so we round down for weight, but we round up for height. Come on. So uh, I had been practicing this thing called jumping for about a year straight so that I could dunk a basketball. And by the time that I was a senior in high school, I could kind of sort of what you almost could call dunk a basketball. And it was mostly, I could almost two-hand it, which was actually a little bit more difficult than a one-hand dunk because it actually required more force for you to jump to get both hands over. So one game, we were blowing out this team. We were already well ahead. And uh, um, we played a defensive zone scheme, and I'm sitting on the wing, and I had been reading the play all night long. They had ran it on us all night long. It hadn't worked all night long. And so I did this miraculous thing. It's the only time in sports that it's, you know, or in life that it's acceptable to steal. And I stole the ball. And not only did I steal the ball, I did it with a full takeoff sprint like he had passed it to me and we were teammates. And I grabbed the ball and I am gone. I turn and look and there is nobody behind me. I mean, I was flying at that point, full speed ahead, full sprint. And I got in my mind as I hit the R3 point line, I'm going to dunk the basketball. I'm going to do it. There's nobody around because my normal mode was I would slow down and just lay it up. The safe bet. But I decided I was going to dunk the basketball. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. Because, by the way, we had cameras back in the 90s that filmed every game. Because we had a few guys that were D1. I was not one of them. And I take off and I get to the goal. I slow and I do the jump. And I'm like... Yeah, 
I'm going. And then I met what, what I would call halfway, full force effort, but halfway talent. Because what I didn't anticipate is I'd already been playing the game for about 20 minutes. So it already ran. By the way, uh, there are two people in life you don't chase. Soccer players and basketball players, because they run a lot, like two to three miles a game. So don't ever chase them. Just be like, go on. But I hit. So here's the edge of the rim, right? And here's my effort. The ball and the rim met at the same time. And do you know what happens when an object is moving at 19 miles-ish an hour, full speed in the air, flying and defying gravity for, for as it were? Do you know what happens when that object has its arm extended? Some of you are trying to like, where's he going? I don't know what happens. I don't understand physics. Um, well, the, the object meets the other object, and it comes to what I would like to call a dead halt. And then I discovered I went from being vertical to horizontal. And then I fell to the ground on my back. So for those who are doing it, like, it was literally this fast. It went up, down, and I was out. And my coach looked at me. He couldn't even hide his face. The whole team is laughing at me. The, and, and by the way, it was a home game. So everybody in the school was like, no, no. And so I laid there on the floor hoping that maybe the gym floor would just open up and swallow me because it was the most embarrassing. It's even more embarrassing than those dreams that we have where we are fully naked. I would have actually preferred that versus what had happened. Why? Because I knew I still had to finish the game and I was waiting for the breath of my lungs to come back and I was waiting there and I suddenly realized there are things that I am called to do in basketball and that ain't one of them. And in life, we too are called to do certain things. Each and every one of us are gifted. Each and every one of us have a calling, a, a ministry to give, a, something that we offer the world around us. And if you are sitting there thinking, I have nothing to offer, that is not true. In fact, um, we're, we're going to talk about, like, you can practice a certain level of spirituality um, but if you, you don't do the things that God requires of you, it's empty. And it's kind of like when we decide to step up to the moment and we try to do the things that God would really have us do, which is win people to Jesus, but our spirituality doesn't meet the test. And we hit the goal and we fall down flat on our back. Isaiah chapter 58 it's kind of like this. If you've never read the passage, it's uh, the prophet Isaiah, who, by the way, if you want to go find Jesus in the Old Testament, uh, I would suggest starting with Jeremiah, uh, who is not a bullfrog, and Isaiah. Isaiah, especially chapter 53 and beyond. Like five people got that reference. Thank you. Isaiah chapter 58. Uh, now some of you are going to Google Jeremiah was a bullfrog and be like, was he a good friend? Yes, he was. Okay. He is a good friend of mine. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 58. All right. He says, no, this is the kind of fasting I want. It's a warning. Uh, in fact, he's warning the people of God not to be empty spiritually, that, that we can outwardly practice things. But if we don't have the right things right and we don't do things the right way, it's empty. In other words, it will have no impact and effect. In other words, we can dress right and we can look right and we can even sound right. But when we pray and when we, uh, uh, we do the spiritual disciplines that God has required of us as Christians, as, as we worship, it doesn't actually impact anybody. In fact, he warns them in Isaiah chapter 58. He says, no, and verse, starting in verse 6, he says, no, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you and let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. It's a reminder that as Christians, Christ didn't just come for those who look the way that you look and sound the way that you sound or have gone through all that you've experienced. 
he came to what? To set people free. When Jesus says, I have come to preach liberty to those who are captive. He's not just talking about spiritual captivity. And then he goes on in verse 7, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7. Isaiah says, share your food with the hungry. Share your food with the hungry. If you were ever wondering, are we supposed to share our food? And the answer is yes. God has blessed us to be a blessing to others. No matter how much you think you have, you have more than you think you have. If you live in America and you make more than $5,000 a year, you have a car, you are among one of the richest people in the world. Now, by American standards, no, but by the world standards, you're among the 3% wealthiest people in the world. Think about that for just a minute. Let it soak in for a second. We're called to share what we've been given. Blessed to be a blessing. If not, we end up spiritually empty. He says in verse 8, or sorry, continuing in verse 7, Share your food with the hungry. Give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide them. And do not hide relatives who need your help. Anybody ever see your caller ID go off and you're like, no, nah, I'm not answering that. It's a cousin who you ain't even talked to and you're like, I already know what they want. He says not to hide from them. He says, and this is why, he goes, then your salvation, he goes, but if you do, if you do those things, then your salvation will come like the dawn. In other words, we who are uh, saved by Jesus Christ, we who believe in him. He didn't just call us to come to church. He didn't just call us to fill a pew. He called us to share the love of God with the world. And sometimes that looks like sharing food, sharing clothes, and giving shelter. Have you taken a look at your closet? Do you have more than enough clothing? Christ calls us to a higher standard. He goes on to say in verses, uh, verses 8 and 9, it says that then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. And then you will call to the Lord and the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Empty spirituality is just that. We can practice things, but if we don't do the things that we ought to do. Paul says that uh, if we know the good that we ought to do and we don't do it, it is sin. It is sin. Our other passage this morning comes from Colossians and we'll pick up here in Colossians chapter 3. And there was a little bit more that was supposed to be uh, in our passage reading this morning. Um, in fact, in the early part of Colossians, Paul is writing to the church and he's giving them both an exhortation and a, an encouragement. Um, all of Paul's letters can be summed up that way, by the way. Uh, Paul always writes in a particular pattern. Uh, he sees a problem, but he always makes sure to present a solution. By the way, that is a great pattern for us as Christians and as leaders in the church, not to just see a problem, because it's easy. Everybody can see problems, right? Like, if we all saw the same thing on the floor and it was a stain or dirt, roach, wet, wet, but, but we don't do anything about it, we're waiting for others to do the work for us, don't you think that in itself is a problem? So many times we approach uh, issues in our life and to include uh, the giving, uh, our giving of our time, our talents, our, and our treasure as a burden rather than a blessing. How do I know? Because... Sometimes when we serve, we kind of don't do it with any kind of joy or any kind of impact. I am thankful that we are a church that doesn't do that, though. How do I know? Because when we were out at the pumpkin patch, I'm going to tell you right now, loading bales of hay is not fun. Anybody think loading bales of hay is fun? Thank you, because I was about to call you a liar in church, right? And sitting out there all day when there's no customers, 
No people to, to see. But man, the moment people showed up, you could sense a, a tangible change. Why? Because we knew at that point we weren't just there to sell pumpkins. That was a great thing. But we were there to meet people and to be a blessing to them. And man, I'm going to tell you, it blessed me to see you be a blessing to them. But we have to warn ourselves at times that our spirituality has to not just to be about us. It has to be about others. This message is about a new way to be thankful and to remember that the reason that we have this table, yes, it is not just so that we feel good. It is so that others can be fed. Others can be fed. It says in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses, uh, uh, verse, starting in verse 10, it says, Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are Jew or Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, Christ is all that matters. And he lives in all of us. That is the good news of the gospel. That it doesn't matter what you have in the bank. It doesn't matter what you look like or what you dress like. It matters that Christ is the Lord of your life. That we can come together and do something. And that we can be thankful for it. It says in this new life, and then he goes verse 12 and says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If you want to know what being a Christian means, it doesn't mean that we are to be walked on, but it also means that we are called to be those things that are most like Christ first. To be humble and to be kind and to be filled with mercy and gentleness and patience. Verse 13 is one of my favorite verses when I see a conflict in the church. When we have a conflict between two different people at times. It says, make allowances for each other's faults. Make allowances for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Have you been offended lately? What does it look like? Each one of us are thinking maybe to ourselves about something in our own life that possibly has kept us. Why does Paul write this? He writes this to the church so that there would be unity in the body of Christ. So that if we do something to offend one another, that we would be quick to move back towards the middle so that we would do what's most important, and that is love the world. Jesus' last words before he ascended in Matthew's gospel said, tell us to go and to make disciples but there are things that prevent us from making disciples many of us know how to be a christian and many of us know how to be even be a disciple but when it comes to making disciples we get lost in the woods perhaps this is where we need to focus our own efforts to make allowances in other words give grace when somebody's going through something that you don't understand. The worst things that we can say to one another as the body of Christ are, well, that's just not the way I would have done it. Sometimes we in the body of Christ are guilty of trying to correct people instead of loving them. Paul goes on to write, remember the Lord forgave you, so we must forgive others. In other words, when we get out of line alignment, when we are not where God has called us to be when it comes to our, our generosity or, or to our even our care of others, that we ourselves must remember that we have been cared for by Christ. He then tells us, above all, clothe yourselves. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts for as members of one body you are called to live in peace and then his last words there that we read this morning were this and always be thankful what are you thankful for this morning think about the list that you could begin to write this november 
Some people take that challenge every year that they'll write on their Facebook page or their social media. Uh, each and every day they'll write something that they're thankful for. And that is a great challenge. But I want you to truly dive into that. Dive into it for just a moment and ask God what you have to be thankful for. Because thankfulness will lead us to a richness of understanding that our situation isn't as bad as it could have been. And it's better than we ever thought it was going to be. When we think about who God is and who God is, is in this message this morning. There's a warning for us to make sure that, that when we uh, come to church, that we aren't just coming to church for ourselves. We come to church to worship God. We come to know God. And then we also come sometimes to get a, a, our, our orders for the week, don't we? That we come and say, where do I need to focus? Where in my community is God calling me to focus my attention? For us as a church, I said, I would love to see this table not only filled, but overflowing. Filled and overflowing. This last week, we got an opportunity. And it was, by the way, uh, if you didn't go this last time to the pastor's cook-off, I encourage you to go next year because A, for those who went, they will tell you it was the greatest fellowship time that we've had. We got to fellowship with 17 other United Methodist churches. Um, we got to go, by the way, the food was fantastic, by the way. Fantastic. But it was the fellowship. It was seeing each other, smiling and, and learning the missions of each church in our district. Each church has a mission to make disciples, and each church looks different. God has called our church to be disciples, to make disciples, and to serve with love. So this, from November until Easter, we're going to find opportunities to serve, to tell our community that we love them and that Christ loves them. But we ourselves need to get ourselves ready for that because you're going to encounter people that don't like you, who don't care if you like them. You're going to encounter people, by the way, if you ever, if you ever wondered how hard it is to make, be a witness in this community, um, and not just I say Satsuma, I just mean in general, go look on a, a, one of the Facebook pages for the community, and you can see that there's a people who are far from God. But we have to be careful to remember that Christ has forgiven us and we have been forgiven by Christ. To forgive and to make allowances. Why? Because if, if God wanted to, the moment that we sinned, the moment that we ever sinned, he could end our life like that. That's the reality of God. But the good news is, is that he hasn't. He's given you more grace and more than enough grace for today. This morning, as we get ready to receive communion on a, a day like today where we have remembered, remembered those who, um, Tucker is the order of worship in there too? Okay, good. On a day like All Saints Sunday, like I, I shared this story with uh, uh, my, my first worship service this morning, and it was to remember that we are surrounded by faithful witnesses, and not only in Scripture, but, but the faithful witness of those who have gone on before us, who taught us about Jesus. I've told you so many times that you probably know my story even better than I do sometimes. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't have a, a mother and father who took me to church. And it wasn't until I was 15 that I discovered the spiritual heritage. Because I'd always asked a question about one particular photo in a photo album. Uh, I was born on December 26, 1979. I am a twin. Uh, yes, there is another dude that looks almost similar to me, but with more tattoos. Okay. Um, in fact, if he walked in here with a suit... He could fool you for a few minutes, and then you would realize, I am not talking to Pastor Clay. <laughs> and yes, we have fooled people before. We have switched classes before, and the teacher never knew. I've been slapped in the face because I have a twin. We'll just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> I there are tons of twin stories I could share this morning, okay? 
But, but one of the things that my brother came out before us, we were premature. Uh, he came out the right way. Uh, I came out the, the, with my foot, uh, my right foot out. And then my mom uh, has always told me, she goes, it was because I was moving the him out of the way. But there's this picture of my grandmothers standing and holding hands together with their hands on the glass. And for years, I looked at that photo and I just thought to me uh, that they were just looking. You know, you know how like you have to put your hand up so you can see things like 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 it helps you somehow. But no, I, I actually asked one of my grandmothers later on what they were doing in that photo and why they were holding hands. And they said, well, we knew that your mother never went to church and we were just praying for you and for your brother to know Christ. Because the day that I called my grandmother and said, I've given my heart to Christ and faith in Christ. She dropped the phone and literally started shouting on the phone, hallelujah. And I'm like, like, listen, granny, whoa, I just, what's a hallelujah? I don't even know what that means. Um, and she picks up the phone and she's sobbing and crying. I have no idea why she's sobbing and crying. I barely understood what it meant to know Jesus. I just, and, and for her, it was a a prayer that was 15 years in the making. 15 years in the making to be answered. And it got answered that day. And for me, there many of us are in church today because of a father or a mother, a grandmother, a grandfather, an auntie, an uncle, or even a cousin. For me, it was because my best friend Paul wanted me to know Jesus Christ. And because of the prayer of my grandmothers. And so we always should remember that it is their faithful witness. That they watch us witness and watch our witness here on earth. That while they are enjoying the comforts of heaven and enjoying all that is that has been promised to us in Jesus Christ. They are also looking with us and worshiping with us every time that we worship. They see you. And they are worshiping with you. And that gives me such a great peace. Knowing, because my granny, she, she didn't play the piano well, but I can remember it, her sitting there every day. By the way, anybody else have a granny that played like the spoons? No? You ever seen somebody play the spoons before? Other than in like a movie from the old time days, right? Yeah, but you've seen it, right? I mean, I can remember sitting around and seeing my grandmother and all the, the men playing fiddles and guitars, and my grandmother, the only woman over there, playing the spoons. She was going to make sure she worshipped God. So the faithful witness that we have, that is what we're called to, is to share the witness and the love of Christ with one another, to inspire each other to acts of faith. Because you never know when you walk in church where somebody needs faith. So we have an insert in your bulletin this morning for communion. If you didn't receive communion on our way in, you have time to run uh, back there and grab it. Um, and uh, Tucker, would you make sure our garbage can is ready for those who um, on the way out the door that they have a chance to put that out there. So we'll follow this. Uh, there will be pauses in there because I will improv certain sections. So please don't look back at your paper and look at me and think I'm off script. It's called improv. Okay, I just want to make you aware of that. So, um, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. It's a good and joyful thing to give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, on this day, All Saints Sunday. To remember those who have gone on before us. To remember their acts of faith. To remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so on this day, we remember what Christ has done for us. That God sent his son Jesus to us so that we would receive salvation. So that we would know our Lord, our God. And that he went to a cross and that he died on a cross. But three days later he was raised to life and that he ascended into heaven. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise 
and in thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup. May the, they be the body of Christ for us today. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray uh, the Lord's Prayer together as the children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our, our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you have your cup this morning, um, help those who are around you that aren't able to peel this back. But uh, this morning we take the bread first. This is the body of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. And now the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the sin and for your sins and the many sins to be forgiven. So, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. May we be clothed with Christ to be the people that you've called us to be. Ones who will not just practice a spirituality that is empty, but to help those who are in need. For indeed, that is why Christ came to free the oppressed. And so you have called us to do the same, to meet the needs of the many. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our closing hymn, would you stand with me as we sing... Break thou the bread of life. Would you join me as we sing? receive this benediction. Lord God, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ to be disciples, to make disciples, to serve with love, to go into the world and to share the love of God and the forgiveness that he offers each and every one of us so that the world would know and believe. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.